Clean energy is the way forward. And we're proud to lead the way across our global operations. With our clean energy innovation hub in Australia and hydrogen blending project in Fort Saskatchewan. By providing solar energy to households in Chile, delivering hydroelectricity in Mexico and Alberta, and helping remote indigenous communities in Canada use renewable energy to reduce their reliance on diesel. ATCO. Always there, anywhere. For 100 years, Fog & Brown has helped our clients achieve their financial goals. Coincidentally, this year also marks Thunderbird's 50th anniversary, and we would like to congratulate them on this monumental achievement. Over the last century, we have forged ahead through the Great Depression, World War II, the Great Financial Crisis, a global pandemic, and more. Along the way, we've adapted, evolved, and established our firm as a stable and trustworthy partner. Our 100th anniversary is a wonderful opportunity to celebrate the clients, team members, and communities that have made us who we are. We're thrilled to share this important milestone here with the team at Thunderbird. 100 years on, Odlin Brown's story is still being written. We look forward to future chapters of making a difference in our communities and helping our clients achieve their financial goals for generations. Paladin Risk Solutions, local experts, global experience. Risk mitigation solutions for the modern world. An expert consultancy, Paladin Risk Solutions is the industry leader in assisting their clients with identifying and mitigating their risk. With Blue Sky Risk Intelligence Monitoring, live notifications and alerts, customized reporting, and geofence real-time data. Paladin Risk Solutions, local experts, global experience. And proud partner and sponsor of Thunderbird Show Park for their 50th season. My name is Gen Sugimoto, CEO of Show Plus. At Show Plus, our team is passionate about equine health, wellness, and safety. I think Show Plus, we can all see the growth that has come with it and it's just an amazing product to have. I think all horses and riders are very privileged to have it now in mostly shows. It has great benefit for us. I think it makes us riders feel much more comfortable going to the ring and knowing that if something happens, we have an extra benefit there. As the title partner and official timekeeper and official watch of the series, Longines is proud to be associated with the Longines FEI Jumping Nations Cup of Canada here in Langley. Longines passion for equestrian in the world dates back to 1869. Today, the brand is involved in the most important equestrian events all over the world. The official watch here in Langley is a model from the Longines Dolce Vita XYVY line. Swiss designer Yvonne Rickmuth has given the famously rectangular timepieces a new identity with sophisticated leather straps referencing the equestrian world so dear to Longines. Their design is evocative to bridles and harness. And now, ladies and gentlemen, at this time we do ask that you please rise if you are able and please remove all caps as we welcome the 2022 Female Artist and Fans Choice CMW Award winner Karen Lee Batten for the singing of our national anthem. Oh, Canada, our home and native land, true patron love of us command. With glowing hearts we see thee rise, the true nor strong and free from far and wide. Oh,
Well, a very good afternoon and what a perfect afternoon it is. Blue skies up above, the singing of the national anthem here in Canada, and uh, we are set for a tasty coming up of the Longines Grand Prix. $235,000 in the prize fund here. And what a lovely field we've got to look forward to. Out on this beautiful field is uh, Tiffany Foster as our first to go. And, uh, well, what's been laid out there for the test is by our course designer, Peter Holmes of Canada. And uh, we're looking at 30 numbered fences in all on the track and uh, it is going to be no giveaway for this one indeed the uh, nations competing not only the home nation of canada but mexico uh, ireland usa brazil and uh, australia also featuring as part of this afternoon's uh, big lineup Alongside me is uh, Olympic rider Nal Nasser, represents Egypt, but actually lives not too far away and a regular here mm. at Thunderbird as well. Uh, Niall, you've just popped in for the afternoon just for some Grand Prix action and we've put you to work. Good to see you. <laughs> Thanks for having me, Stephen. Uh, lovely spot here, beautiful arena, but what's been laid out there on the course um, isn't so lovely. <laughs> no, pretty pretty testing track today. Um, I was pretty surprised not to see the open water though for, for a CSIO Grand Prix. Uh, but Tiffany's going to show us the way here on a nine-year-old. I think this is his first meter 60 start, yep. so a uh, good way to get us going. Yeah, Tiffany Foster, winner of a five-star Grand Prix here last week, not in this arena, but uh, put her first five-star Grand Prix win together there on a battle cry that's joint-owned with Kent Farrington as well. Has been with her for the uh, last season or so. It came through nicely in Florida this year. Niall, talk to me some of the numbers coming down here. We've got the keg fence coming up with a nice little plank on top. Yeah, so this, this middle line here just walks a very normal five. And then this next oxer, seeing as it's the third jump in a line, uh, it walks a normal six, but I think that's going to be a little steady. You could see how Tiffany curved out a little bit just to give herself some room. This oxer comes quick out of the corner, and then it's quite a loose five to this vertical with the Liverpool tray on the backside. Right hand bend here to an oxer. And then it's just a very level six strides to this double combination. I think oxer, oxer, it could get a little bit long there, but Tiffany does that great. You just want to stay mindful of the time allowed here coming towards home. Jump this oxer, walks a very level eight into the triple, but I wouldn't be surprised to see some people shape that out in nine since you have two verticals coming in. Um, here we go, it's two yeah. to one. It looks like that maybe just got a little away from her. She got a big jump in and ran out of room at B and then it's a short seven home. Well, and it finishes uh, with the score of uh, four at 77.13, uh, which is interesting, 81 seconds is the time allowed, so she's inside that as part of this $235,000 Longines Grand Prix this afternoon. First time into a five-star Grand Prix with that horse, a big flip around fr from last week where she was, she was winning on a horse with experience there, but actually, uh, that came over as a very good round for the first I think, spin. I think Tiff has to be very happy with that. I mean, the horse marched around like a seasoned veteran here um, in its first meter 60 track. Uh, she made she made that look quite easy, actually. Yep, did a very good job there. Well, let's go on to Mexico. And actually, he finished well here yesterday in our top five in uh, yesterday's good class. Uh, Luis Gerardo Castaneda Mercado of uh, Mexico and Untakeable, the 11-year-old by Untouchable for the uh, Mexican rider competing here individually this week. Mexico with a squad here. Pairing that have been together since May of uh, last year. Uh, and last week into their first five-star here, so we've been two five-star weeks back-to-back -back mm -hmm. and two-star Grand Prix winning combination down in San Miguel. But this is a big step up and actually a big fence coming on early here at the third, a full-on one meter 60 with yeah. this big gate underneath. Big gate underneath, pretty bulky jump. That first line walks a little bit up in the eight, so you'll see some people creep up the inside line. Now you can see he's maybe starting to run into a bit of trouble, coming in a little too strong to the Liverpool and then gets really short in the five to the plank. Really well managed though, I thought, to number six. Here he comes around the corner. It's very important to keep your impulsion here because if you get a dead jump like that, this five actually gets quite far away. Um, the horse handled that really well. I I'm gonna get you get go back a step and explain to me dead sure. jump. Sorry, uh, a dead <laughs> jump, that means like, you know, when you kind of come in with too little pace and you get a very kind of high lofty jump that yeah. lands you very dead and shallow right you always want to make sure you can keep some rhythm even over the jump so that when you land you have an easier time to get away from the fence no. four five six so he opts for the nine yes. but he does it quite late gets very buried there has to ride up to b really great job by the horse there to jump that and then there's nice and tall and seven to the last yeah, so we've seen a couple of four-fault rounds. Yeah. Seems like it's a very jumpable course here. 
uh, I'm sure we'll get we'll get a good a good number of clears and hopefully an exciting jump off. Absolutely, four out of those first two there with Tiffany Foster and Battlecry and uh, Luis and Untakeable. But both of those, uh, as you say quite rightly, without the experience as well of having done um, those big classes in terms of the horses with the first one and horse and rider with the second. Uh, but just to go around for the four is good stuff. And actually, I thought he came well out of the triple combination because I was looking on the way out, thought the Oxen might get a bit wide mm -hmm. for them. Mm -hmm. Oh, good reaction there yep. by both horse and rider, considering they came in, um, you know, in a slightly less ideal spot. Um, speaking of experience, <laughs> he's, uh, <laughs> here's Connor Swale. Well, I was just actually watching what you didn't see on your screen is Michael Blake, the chef to keep the Irish, just giving Connor Swale final, um, you know, discussion points mm. down there from that point of view. Um, Connor and Count Me In, many times winner with this horse for the world number eight. Three of the world's top ten here this week in uh, T-Bird, which is great to see with Connor at uh, number eight. We've got Kent Farrington at number nine and Shane Sweetnam at number ten, all of them featuring here this week, which is uh, adding to what is a top class week and field for these classes. And uh, for this pair, well, they've gone on to World Cup wins and many times winners here at Thunderbird as well. He's another uh, almost resident here at this fabulous venue. Uh, Connor with a 6 year old by Count Granus. Uh, Crosby, let's see if uh, they can pull it out again today. Yeah, yeah, this is a very seasoned partnership. I mean, it's interesting though, Connor got this horse pretty late in its career. Yes. Uh, he only got a couple of years ago, so he was already 14. Uh, but they're close to racking up about a million euros in prize money together. So, yes. um, pretty, pretty incredible, <laughs> pretty incredible partnership that seemed to have gelled very early on. And Connor's just gone from strength to strength, especially over the last year or so. Really climbed up into the top 10 on the world rankings and has a great group of horses right now that allows him to really demonstrate to everybody how great of a rider he is. Certainly has. It's all about consistency. I know the, the apps from the Jumper app as well come out. For sure. 57% um, of the time of 135 rounds. I mean, do a lot of jumping. Unreal. Yeah, but unreal. And 66% of the time in the top 10 at a yeah. meter 60. I mean, yeah making this look easy so far he's gonna have to ride up here a little bit yeah you can see him make a little move up to the double so horse with a bit of a more normal stride you wouldn't really yes. say it's a big striding horse so some of these distances might get a little long for him or connor will just decide to add like i'm expecting an add here two three four five six seven eight nine yeah oh oh, no. oh that's naughty i don't think he's going to be very happy with that I mean, this horse has lost a little bit of con of its confidence, mm. I think, at the beginning of this year. Connor took some time to put the pieces back together in Florida, but it seems like when he comes to a big combination like that on maybe, you know, a bit of a holding distance that the horse just seems to hold his breath a little bit yeah. and, and say no thank you. Oh, that was a shame. That was a shame. Yeah. As you say, I mean, they, they were they were back together in, in the spring, in, in April, and doing jumping some really nice rounds there out in the field. Mm. And as you say, just... You know, he's taking the pace off there, and the, and the engine just completely dropped For off. For sure, yeah, a little, a little out of character there. I mean, you can see here um, from where we're sitting, there's actually quite a big ground line from the shadow, yeah. um, you know, right in front of the fence. I wonder if that confused him a little bit. Yeah. Maybe made him think, like, ooh, I actually have to take off from here. Um, and that just left him That just left him a little confused. That, that's that split second yeah. of, of uncertainty, mm -hmm. saying, okay, um, Connor riding up to that part of the ring as well, just yeah. to go and have a look, which is... Um, sensible from that point of view. In the meantime, on screen, we're concentrating on Mario Delorier in the Wishing Well Farms at Bardolina, 14 year old now uh, for the Canadian. And uh, with Mario, well, they've gone on to lots of big wins uh, from, of course, uh, right the way through to being part of the lineup for the Olympics last time around as well as the, the individual rider heading oh. there and has the first fence down. Brutal. But it's, it's again, it's not small in any part of this course. He no. doesn't, doesn't lead you in too, um, too easily. And number one is so plain. It's away from the gate. It's tall enough. Um, they always say, you know, for when, you, when you have the first jump down, it's usually a mistake that happens from the warm-up ring, right? Yeah. Maybe you don't jump a big enough vertical before you go. Or, but Mario has so much experience, you know. I doubt, I doubt that he left uh, anything up to chance out there in the warm-up. That's just looked like she just kind of took off, really, without much, uh, without much emphasis yeah. to leave the fence up. You say that from experience as well, I'm guessing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I've been there. I've knocked <laughs> the first jump down. <laughs> And this horse has a bit of a left drift. You can yes. see Mario's always kind of working to keep her in the middle of the fence. He does an unbelievable job. Um, you can see him just kind of holding that rein to keep her keep her nice and straight. Still looking good from that point yeah, of view. Yeah, I would have expected this to be our first clear. And I mean, he's making the rest of this course look like a walk in the park. 
which is which is the bit that's the real kicker for you when it's right. the first fence. Mm -hmm. you know. I know. I should have, you know. Anyway, <sighs> that's a shame. It's going to be on four at seventy-seven one one, and uh, first fence down. It is going to leave them with disappointment there for Mario Delori and uh, Bardolina. But again, you talking about there that little bit of drift that this horse has. There is really very very few, and it's it's a, a, a very small number of horses out there because they're animals for sure that you are not working something somewhere totally totally but what makes it so difficult with a horse that consistently drifts one direction and you another know uh, yeah exactly exactly yeah. you know it's coming uh, you know another good example is michael vander floating on beauville that horse yes. has a ridiculous left drift and you think that you know they're making these oxers so much wider on themselves by going to the side um but you know these horses just have so much power and experience and uh, the riders know what to expect and they're able to put them in spots that um, really mask some of their weaknesses there. 19-year-old Francisco uh, Pascal Vega and uh, dominant 2000 said uh, he was a junior uh, in, in 2021 as part of the team there for the under 18s at the Young Rider Championships. He's won four stars last year in Jalapa and uh, was second in the two-star Grand Prix in Mexico City earlier on this year and again you know, this is another step up from that. But actually, from what I've seen this week, they should cope with that well. Yeah, yeah, young rider, a little bit of an ex more experienced horse. I feel like they had a you know a few really top finishes down in Mexico and some yes. of those bigger bigger classes. And that's the point you, you're getting to. You know, the transition. Mm -hmm. and, and I expected that to fall mm -hmm. probably more than it has so far. What mm -hmm. was your thinking? Yeah, I'm, I mean, that's set on a very level distance. You know, usually when you have a plank, the course designer will, will give you, you know, either some sort of question leading up yes. to it, you know. Um, but that's quite a wide oxer before it. You get the horses jumping very forward. You can see the riders put a lot of pressure to get them over that liver pool with water underneath. And then you have a really delicate plank on a very normal distance. So if you're not able to cover the ground there and then rebalance them for that plank it's easy to just get rolling down that hill and push that out of the way and, and when you're if you like practicing training at home how much do you practice lines like that go, go okay we're going to put a plank up there and just yeah emulate it's it. it's interesting <laughs> you know the, the the more the more you jump on on a five-star tour the more you realize that a lot of the questions you know come up again and again yeah. and they're they're quite similar you know long stride long four into a double of verticals or a long distance into a vertical oxer combination a boxy distance to a plank you know there are things that mm. you know like at that level and, you're and probably then of course gonna will mix and match them. and then they'll mix and match and obviously play with the materials of the fences and the hills of the ring so you can never really emulate it you know to the t at home but you can certainly you know set things up to get the horses thinking with you and to give yourself you know an opportunity to to practice and to see those things uh, before you get to the horse show uh total of eight there for uh, francisco pascal vega uh, the 19 year old there with a, with a horse stepping up again y you shouldn't be too dissatisfied Not, with no that. no just a couple cheap rails there i thought he rode a really good round maybe got a little deep to that oxer out of the corner before the triple but besides that i thought that was very respectable uh, similar age group is sam walker of canada from uh, ontario caledon to be exact and Sam with Equine America, Ivanhoe, the 10-year-old for Amy Mason, a horse that came from uh, Ellen Whitaker earlier on this year. And for those that were following along in, in Florida, he jumped this horse into the national classes, yeah. then started to give a bit more international experience to this horse. Finished well in the Nations Cup Grand Prix in uh, San Juan Capistrano just a few weeks ago into that uh, US stage yeah. of the launching FER Nations Cup. S and S last year, he was a young rider team bronze medalist with a different horse. Right, yeah, slightly newer ride for Sam. A uh, big scopy horse. Looks like he was a little sticky there at number two. Landed a little too close to the back rail um, than than we would expect for a scopy thing like that. But car uh, sorry, Sam has gotten him right nicely in front of his leg now. This course should suit this horse. They've they've really been developing well together. You can see the horse improved a lot over over the Wellington circuit and now is ready to step up to some of these classes as uh, as Sam's main horse. Gets that five very easily. Big stepper. He should no, have no problem in this six. Oh, you can see he's starting to work a little yeah. harder than he needs to. Yeah, and there goes the back rail. You could kind of see that from the beginning of the course. Yes. This horse has been holding its breath a little bit. Sam was really good to hold it together until then, but um, he's really going to have to figure out a way to get him over this oxer coming out of this triple here. Yeah, the horse is just it doesn't really look like himself today. 
Oof. I don't know if that's a result of maybe a hard fault in the warm-up ring or something, but you know this isn't re usually a horse that holds his breath like that. Yeah. So I mean, still an amazing job by oh, Sam absolutely. to get that get that done just on four faults. I mean, um, he's level pegging with everyone else right now. Exactly. Comes out of that with a second five star uh, spin around the Grand Prix just on the four faults, and this is a big double as well coming. Big in there. bulky double. I, the the di the distance there walks a very level six, but I always find when you have an oxer oxer line, this is going up the hill a little bit. You have black rails there it's all a little impressive it tends to ride a little bit longer than than what you walked and uh, you could tell there that horse just was sucking back the whole way yeah. until it eventually sat on the back rail yeah 160 spread on that mm -hmm. as i say the uh, verticals we're looking at uh, 160 as you expect around this course and some some good spreads on on there as well out to uh, 160 and 170 if we're looking at, at fence 11 from that point of view and swiftly in and off and running is uh, alison robitaille of the USA and Oakingham Lyra, 10 year old by uh, Tornesh. Tornesh, which was the top horse that was ridden by uh, Marlon Bayard Janssen, of course. Mm -hmm. And uh, for her again, coming back into the top flight, having over the last few years on, and done so successfully well, from from the jumper stats, 61% of the time of 28. Yeah, this is this is probably one of the more more exciting horses here in North America right now. That's just starting to step up to five star level. Um, she's had a few really top results in some big Grand Prix lately. Um, just a very catty horse. Allison rides her great. You can yeah. tell they're a good match. She knows exactly when to put pressure on and when to just back off and let her jump the jump. Ah, it looks like that vertical came down. Um, you can tell Lyra is maybe just getting a little strong, starting to be a little too anticipatory of the fences. But that was a very unusual rail for her. That five does walk a little bit long. I wonder if she just kind of rocked up to it um, and just went through it instead of up and over. Yeah, finished eighth into the Grand Prix um, last week here as well. Of course, it was ridden. Um, by Mackenzie Ray at, at the Oakingham Stud, which actually produced Fultic, yeah. which uh, Ben Mayer rides yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. and she opted for the nine into the triple combination, which I think we'll see a lot of, especially on these smaller models um, of horses. There is quite a bit of curve there too, so the course designer has given you the option to swing out, even if you're on a bigger horse and you feel like you need to come in to that combination quite slow, you can really use that bend to your advantage and uh, and fit that extra stride in. But for these smaller horses, um, it's it's nine all day with two verticals coming in there. Well, listen, the fastest of the fours so far at 75.54. At the moment, the fours are tied. So uh, those five would jump off if there were the case there were no clear. But uh, Alison there, fastest on the four. But when we get a clear, and I think we will, mm -hmm. that will then determine the places. So she would be high up there on the horse that originated in Ireland. And so uh, we will be uh, off to Brazil with Santiago Lambre and uh, Jotor van Het Klinkhoff. Uh, 14 years of age as a horse, but actually has only done six big rounds yeah. in terms of, of this level of competition, clear of 59% of the time. And with Santiago, is in very good hands. For Absolutely. The the Brazilian Olympian a little bit a little crooked there to yeah. the first and now he's going to have to really ride up on this eight ah uh, that's a that's a shame you could tell the horse was just a little wiggly there didn't really know where he was and Santiago couldn't get that inside line for the eight had to had to be a bit wide and then ends up just galloping up to the front rail and punching it out we're seeing some some weird faults here today yeah first fence second fence um, you know that weird stop with Connor. It's turning into a pretty interesting class, considering that you know it's maybe not the the biggest Grand Prix and maybe not the most technical one. But it seems like the course, the course builder has done just enough to to pick up a few four fault rounds um, all over the place here. Santiago is such an amazing rider. I really enjoy watching him. Rides with so much feeling. It's pretty active up there um, as a as a style, but never seems to get in the horse's way. Is just always trying to. Just help them in whatever way he possibly can. A little touch on the back rail there. It's a bit late to fit that stride in, but gets it done well. A little leg out. Ah, yeah. yeah. And again, that will start, to, as I, and the whole point of an oxer coming out of that, that triple is, is for some, if you're in trouble early on, that's going to start to get very long on the way out. For sure. It's 160 spread again. Definitely. Uh, so we're going to see them on eight faults there at 74.11. Eight for Santiago Lambre and uh, Jodor van Klinkenhof. And again, that, that's what you're talking about, design of, 
of five star tracks if we were talking three star you'd probably have a vertical on the way out exactly to yeah. be a little bit kinder from that point of view totally and when you have two verticals you know coming into a triple i always say you know you want to ride that like a double of verticals right the last thing you want is to come in really fast run out of room at b and then c ends up being so far away um, so it's all about you know kind of coming in quietly making sure you can get you know a pretty smooth jump over b so that your horse is already carrying momentum to jump out of c uh, Samantha Beers now of Canada and uh, Sheik de MZ, 10 year old stallion by uh, Cigarette Set JPHZ. And uh, for Sam, well, 54% of the time at 24 rounds so far on the uh, jumper stats as well for this pair. Now, this will be a really interesting one to see because this is a good opportunity for them coming into the uh, five star Grand Prix here. They've finished well in the four star Grand Prix in Thermal uh, back in March. She's a rider who's been on teams before now for Canada as well, competed well at Spruce Meadows. So they, they could be one to come out of the pack here that, that maybe yeah. some don't expect. Yeah. She was the first one to do nine up the first line. And when I walked, I thought that there was really an option there. There's so much curve on that, too, that you can pick your line and decide what's best for your horse. It's putting together a really solid round so far. It seems like this is kind of where things start to unravel is at this point onwards in this course. That five was quite long for her. She's going to have to reel things back in here. Great shot to that Oxer. Steps up in the six. It's going really well so far. I don't want to jinx her. She was here at the very beginning when I was here. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, she opts for the nine. Nice and slow in, can put a bit of a leg at B. Come on, Sam, bring it home. Yeah. She's going to be okay for time. She's yeah. going to be... Nice. There yes. it is. There we go. 78-03. Incredible. 81 is fine. Did say beforehand. You did. You <laughs> called that. I called that one. Dark horse I'm right here. I'm taking that one. Thank you very much, I Sam, proving yeah. my point. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but she rode that to perfection, she did. really. Yeah, she deserved that. So Sam Buers gives us the first clear round, and hence I was... Uh, again, leaning on the Alison Robitaille part because she now goes into second on the four faults of 75-54 and Sam Walker in third after that on four faults of 75-56. But 81 the time allowed, so inside that, a right at 78-03. And uh, gives us clear round number one and a roar from the crowd, which was lovely to hear. And uh, Shane Sweetnam is quite used to that uh, recently. He's been uh, really firing on all thrusters with a whole group of horses, notably James Can Cruise, but also uh, excited to see this one, the nine-year-old out of the blue SCF yeah. from the Spy Coast Farm. Spy Coast Farm, huge breeding operation in uh, America as well, with their bases uh, notably in uh, Lexington, Kentucky, too, of course, into the arguable horse capital mm -hmm. down there, amongst all the racing yards, too. And and really, for this horse, first, first big five-star Grand Prix for them as well. He's, you know, tended to be with... James Can Cruz and this horse gets the gets the chance now and deservedly so because it's this is another grey that's just been sitting in the wings. Yeah, Shane's been developing this horse slowly over the winter circuit. Um, Shane's really, you know, at one of the best stretches of his career right now. Um, you know, s solidly entrenched in the yeah. top ten. Um, this is this horse actually a, a, s a sister on the mom side to an eight year old that we have also bred out of Spy Coast Farm. Yeah, also a grey horse with a lot of jump. Um, but I have to say Shane's really been impressing me with how he's how he's brought this horse along. He never seems to overphase her, but definitely, you know, for a nine year old knows knows exactly when to ask um, for a bigger a bigger test and this is definitely one of those instances. And I have to say this is probably as fair of a course for, for a yes. young horse as, as you'll get, you know. No open water, no wall, um, you know, nothing nothing that screams, Oh, you need a you need a ton of experience to jump this and even if it does you know Shane Shane has all that experience yeah. that he can transfer over to his horse so far looking really good I wonder what he opts here into the triple one two three four five. yeah he goes for the nine beautiful yeah you can see her really open up behind there over B really catty horse actually has her own style but definitely knows where the jumps are yeah. there's a beautiful clear round and Shane just showing his form. Time is absolutely fine for them at uh, the time of 76.27. So swiftly, we've gone from no clears to two clears. Shane Sweenham and uh, with out of the blue SCF. As I say, out of the blue comes a little out of the shadow yeah. of James Can Cruz. James is, uh, you know, a year older as well, which helps sure. from that point. For sure. Yeah. So uh, that's a good one. Mm -hmm. 
very encouraging, I think. Um, yeah. You know, Shane Shane really been uh, meticulous about about bringing this horse along, and uh, it's always great when your plan works out and when you choose to step them up that they prove to you that you know, yeah, they are ready, and, and your feeling was right. So with two clears on the board, that gives them something to think about because we're up to our 11th in the order. Canadian uh, Alicia Gedban lewis and uh, the 11-year-old uh, beneficial for uh, Alicia, again, who's been uh, getting more experience with this uh, combination. In fact, to jump some really good rounds in Spruce Meadows and uh, onto the squads already in uh, California. Nations Cup final last year, too, in uh, Barcelona as part of the Canadian squad there. Mm. And again, has been touching on that, that big squad underneath of course, uh, the watchful eye of Ian Miller. A little bit of a rub at the first fence. This is a, a smaller horse, so I can imagine we'll, you know, we'll see kind of the adding distances for her, especially into the triple. Um, you know, these distances might get a little tricky just because the horse is a bit short stepping and all these lines are a bit forward. She, she skims over that plank. She takes the inside line here to get the six done. That was very well ridden. I'm curious about this five here, whether she might stick an extra one in or just kind of run up there on the five and rely on the horse's quality to jump it. One, yeah, she's just going to canter up there. Beautiful, nice room. Ah, the trails yes. are behind. That was my concern. It's always tricky with small horses, and you have a you know you have a longer distance at a line. Um, you know, do you do you do the extra one or do you do you just kind of roll on up there? And I guess it really depends on what control you have and how much power your horse can generate off of a holding distance. Um, I mean, you could see we starting to get a little hairy now. Yep. She just kind of got the horse unraveled in that long five. And then obviously the next line is also forward. So she, she needed to come in with pace, but then she ends up dragging that oxer down behind and does the same at the double. And yeah, that's just tough, tough, tough track for a small so horse, I'd say. Yes. So 16 at 75, 28 for Alicia Gedban Lewis and Beneficial. You say all the all the jumping ability. It's just when that starts to get get hard, and, and sometimes it, it works, and sometimes you know it starts to uh, compound. For sure, unfortunately, from yeah. that point of view. Yeah. Uh, but we've seen some good rounds out of them. 16 though today uh, with a four down for uh, Alicia, and uh, to Chess, uh, Chess for Kyle King, and uh, another one with uh, a good set of results in terms of their clear round rate. Um, Chess, the 12-year-old here, again, very different type from the horse that we've just seen from that point of view. Completely opposite type, I'd say. You know, yes. this is a bigger, big striding, slower moving horse, um, whereas Alicia's was a real cat-like kind of, uh, you know, quick stepper. Um, Cal hasn't had this horse an awful long. Um, I think it was previously ridden by Nick De La Gioia. It was. Yeah, yeah it's, been, it's been since the sort of August of last year. Yeah. Right, maybe a little bit before that, but they started FEI yeah. in August of last year. I mean, this this is a massive, massive stepper, and yes. it's, it's interesting for you, for you guys watching at home. You'll see how much steadier all these lines ride for him. He has to turn up short here to be mindful of the time allowed. It's a slow-moving horse. This is already one less stride than everyone to the Liverpool, and he's doing it while hanging yeah. on and still getting yeah. there a little close. And this six is going to be very boxy. Yeah, you can see him. I mean, it's tricky with a with a big mover like this. You have to slow down to fit the strides in. Yes. But because they're already so slow moving, you're you're kind of you know feeding into that um, like that slow motion canter that makes it very difficult to make a tight time allowed. Makes it very difficult to be competitive. Um, you kind of you're relying on you know these massive massive courses where you hopefully only get a few clear. Uh, because it's just it's just a hard type to be competitive with, and Kyle is one of the most competitive riders <laughs> out there. So, but but again, he fits into when it's a tough track. Exactly, you know, that's exactly. The thing. And and I remember walking the course with him in in California last year, and the same thing. You know, we're yeah. walking up a line, he goes six, and he goes yeah. four. Yeah, yeah exactly. And what? And look, he's <laughs> he's doing this eighth, and he's making it look like the nine because the horse yep. just has so much step, almost runs out of room at B. Good ride coming out. That was actually a real shame. Yeah. He wrote a beautiful round, made the time allowed easily. Just looked like he crept up the inside line a little too too early and ended yeah. up a little underneath that oxer. Always difficult with the Liverpool there. It tries to draw the attention away from the horses. And and, and it is balancing that up because it, what we're talking about is a horse that's got loads of power, yeah. loads of stride, which yeah. is exactly the attributes you want. Exactly. And now you've got to got to, got to fit it in and use those to the best advantage. It's, it's a super horse. Awesome totally. Yeah. So let's let's head to Australia. Australia is part of the teams this week as well. One of five teams here competing. Sunday will see us into that launching FEI Nations Cup. Uh, Katie Laurie is hugely experienced for uh, the international teams. 
and for Australia. And uh, Django the second is the 12-year-old uh, by Lodano. She competed right the way through to uh, Olympic Games previously as well. Started out in New Zealand, then uh, rode for uh, Australia. For Katie's now been based in Canada. And uh, Katie, who was on the team previously here last year as well. And uh, from wins in Thermal this season, as I say, it's also seen her with horses like Delphi that mm -hmm. they produced uh, through the top level. And if I remember, this one is uh, related to Delphi through the downside yeah. as well. Huh. Actually, quite a difficult horse, it looks like. Katie does an incredible job with it. She's already, you know, racked up a bunch of five-star results up in Calgary. Ah, there goes that same oxer. And then she has that behind. I don't think this horse has done a whole lot this year. No. Yeah, so probably one of the you know earlier classes that it's done this season. Um, you can tell it's maybe a little rusty. It's a little bit on the bridle there. And just uh, well, Katie's trying to sit against him and just ends up dragging those two jumps down behind. And seems to be finding its rhythm now. This should be a pretty simple line for her. Yeah, that six gets very steady. This is also a horse with a ton of stride. I would imagine she's just going to do the eight into the into the triple and you could tell now she knows you know her two down she doesn't have much of a chance so she just uses this to school her horse she goes deep into the corner make sure she has the control where she needs gets that eight done very nicely definitely a horse with its own style yeah huh? yeah no and has, d has done very well down in thermal in, in in february and march then a definitely. little bit of a break then and yeah. then we're into we're into June already. Gosh, yeah, did, I how know. did that happen? Where does the time go? Uh, finish on a total of eight there. It's uh, 80.22 for Katie Laurie and uh, Django the second for the Australians. So the Aussies uh, as part of a team here on Sunday as well. Yeah, in the meantime, Susan Horn. Susan going very well in our class a little bit earlier on today as well. The uh, Canadian with KS Corradina, 16 year old. Uh, the mayor by uh, Korlinski for the Kingsfield Farm of uh, Ontario and uh, for her again uh, lots of experience with this pairing now they were on to the Nations Cup last year in Morocco in uh, Rabat as part of their set of four star shows there and uh, now bringing that experience back here to, to home ground regular spot for many throughout the summer here at T-Bird of course not just the We've had two big weeks of five stars, but they have a continual running yep. uh, of shows here. You are he you've been here on a regular basis. Oh, for sure. This is one of my favorite horse parks. They are so welcoming, and they do such a fantastic job, always innovating and doing something new each year. Bit of a strong adjustment there from Susan, but I really do like this horse. You know, very flashy jumper, a lot of scope. Great behind. This could be another dark horse to give us a second clear, or third clear, sorry. Yeah. She's very efficient around that turn. Mm. Time allowed shouldn't be an issue. Oh, there's a big stretch coming out. But again, horse with plenty of step makes that five stride look very normal, even though it reached a little bit for the back rail before it. Susan gets very nice and straight here. You can see making a bit of a... Yeah, she's realizing the horse is maybe not covering the width of the oxers as easily as it should. She had a great reaction there to just put her leg on and come into that double a little stronger than than she would otherwise. And same deal to that ox out of the corner. She made sure that that last stride never gets too short on the horse. She's going to have to Come leg her out of here. Yeah, you yeah. Say you're going to yeah. struggle to get yeah. across that yeah. back bar. Yeah. Kind of see that coming. Yeah. Oh, that was too That's bad. A yeah, that was too bad. It's a couple horses now that we see just not really come off the leg. And then, uh, you know, there's enough wide oxers on course here where if they're not responsive enough and are not taking you to that back rail, there's only so much you can do as a rider to, to, to make, them, make them reach, you know, across for the width. Well, it, it's, it's all, all the time with, with anything with the horses. They, they want to do it as well, you know. And you've got yeah. to, as you say, it's, it's a case of um, if we're going in here not quite right, it might not work. But you've got to, got to work with it. You're there, you're there to assist and, and to help them along the way. Susan Horn finishing on four at 76.52. Ashley Vogel now. Yep. Uh, Mandiva AGZ, the 11-year-old by Milord Katago for uh, another of the young riders coming through. Ashley, a uh, recent graduate of uh, down in Miami. Congratulations. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Absolutely. Always a great feeling. Uh, last year. Well, uh, previous years has been uh, a young rider gold medalist back oh. to 2021 and has done the same as Mary Delorey and had the first, first fence down. Yeah, that is kind of a nasty vertical, very plain away from the gate. 
So he's gone and rolled the second jump here. I wonder if they maybe could have, yeah, well usually, you know, when you get faults early on in the course, it, it stems from somewhere in the warm-up ring, maybe not making the horse try hard enough, maybe being a little too casual with it. Again, this is a horse with plenty of jump, plenty of stride, and Ashley's put together some fabulous rounds down in Wellington yeah. on the grass with it. Um, again, a bit of a slower mover, so sometimes hard for Ashley to make the time allowed. When you, when you watch her walking the course with Shane, you can always tell that they're very mindful of their corners, and you know, then they have a long line. They figure out whether they can leave one out there or not. Um, you know, it's uh, a bit of a bit of a different, you know, mechanism. You know, riding a horse like this, you're kind of always, always against the clock, right? And sometimes, regardless of how fast you go or how fast you think you're going, you still have a hard time making yeah. the time just because of how deliberately they move and how much time they spend in the air. And, and the, y y you're balancing those attributes, and I can think of uh, you know others like Ladriano. That's For sure. Jump the side of a house. Right. But but you know, and, and wants those big Grand Prix yeah. to go at. Yeah, exactly. You know, you're, you're sitting on horses that you're going. Actually, I want it bigger. Right. Build it, <laughs> build right. it bigger. Yeah. That yeah, was too bad. Just yeah. not her day. I mean, just not her day. That happens. That happens. The two early faults and then just a little touch out of the triple. Um, you know, Ashley will learn from that. And, uh, you know, definitely a lot in this young rider's future. She's a, she's Absolutely. a terrific rider. Yeah, past winner of uh, the under-25 titles down in yeah. uh, Wellington. That title picked up this year by Summer Hill. And uh, for Ashley, well, a good run in here as well over the last few weeks, been competing in the likes of uh, the Invitational in Kentucky to prep up for this, but just not quite happening today, unfortunately. Uh, so Ashley Vogel heads out in the 12. Uh, Grant Sager now and uh, Frieda. Uh, Grant last year, too, was uh, on to teams for the U.S. as well and uh, making his appearances on those at... Yeah, if, uh, he takes a bit more of a direct like approach to the first fence. I really, you know, turns right up to it, keeps his horse under him. Seems like that might not be a bad idea instead of coming from a long way and letting them kind of lull to sleep on the way to the first. 
take a turn there. Oh. Yeah, it looks like their five, first five-star Grand Prix for this pair, although they've yeah. done a few five-star shows recently. They've been doing the sort of 145, 150 shoulder classes. Yeah. Which you'd expect with a nine-year-old. Exactly. There we go. Look like at the... Ah, ah, there it goes. Yeah. Just skips forward through the, the vertical at the Liverpool, unfortunately. Yeah. But again, for for this horse, I would, uh, you know, assume in, in, in the way that you will bring on a horse is you'll go and jump a, you know, a course like this. It isn't always going to be no. your first clear straight exactly. off. Exactly. Then you'll drop down a bit again yeah. to give gives confidence and 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 just get some other good rounds and just yeah. keep building up, dropping down, building yeah, up, dropping down sure. through through the whole of this year, really. And what's what's great too about you know giving giving it a go is that it it really shows you what you need to work on yes. you know um i think you know, some of the horses weaknesses come out you know a bit more when you have these technical tracks and uh, you know i hadn't actually noticed because you know patrice is so competitive with this horse all the time um but it looked today like you know he was lacking a little bit of rideability you know um she's fussing a little bit uh she's you know maybe not keeping her lines all the time um and you can tell you know on his way to the triple there he was trying to slow down and she um, just, you know, had absolutely no business listening to, to what he was saying. So, uh, you know, he calmly stops her and does a circle, comes back and jumps it, makes sure to keep the horse educated. But I'm sure Patricio, you know, this is, uh, you know, a good um, a good measuring stick for him. Yeah, I think he's going to leave this knowing exactly what he needs to work on. Uh, you know, he'll maybe start to build her up into more of a Grand Prix horse instead of, you know, just going out and, and using her as a, as a meter 45, meter 50 winner. Because uh, she really, I mean, she jumps the jumps oh, pretty easily. It yes. just looks like, you know, she's just a little unruly sometimes <laughs> in between the jumps little maturity yeah exactly little maturity will come there and as we said you'll, you'll then you'll then drop back maybe two star three star grand prix yeah and go on from there this is a well-established five star uh combination in daniel coyle and legacy uh, the 13 year old for uh, aerial grange of canada and for the irish rider 54 percent of the time having jumped clear on this horse as well they were nations cup grand prix winners last year in rotterdam as well and he also picked up uh, those world cups including yeah uh, into Fort Worth in Texas. Daniel's been on great form. He seems to win something at every yep. show these days. Uh, again, another seasoned partnership. They really know each other inside out. They've been, you know, world championships. They've been to all sorts of massive Grand Prix, Nations yep. Cups. Um, this should be right up their alley. And, and Daniel now top 20 rider as well. He's yeah. moved up into his ri highest ranking, I think, now. Yeah, well deserved. Yeah. Another horse with a bit of a drift. Tends to drift to the right, I believe. Um, but Daniel does a great job keeping her in the middle. And this is a horse with beautiful rideability. You can tell that Daniel knows exactly where she's going to end up every time. He's going to opt for the nine, I believe. Yep, looks like it, yes. Yep. Nice and steady in. Leg out. Yeah, he's making this look like a walk in the park. Which... Oh, oh. sorry. Well, he just little started shift to come a little well. shift. Yeah, 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 exactly, yeah. They were just moving to that right-hand side yeah, of the fraction. Yeah, and I miss I actually missed his number there. I wonder yeah. I wonder if he went one less. I mean, it did walk like a short seven. If you have a horse, and there's a bit of a right curve, if you have a horse that goes a bit to the right, um, you know, it's tempting to just leave that stride out, but you never really want to do that to a skinny going towards home at the end of the course. Um, I'd be curious to maybe go back yeah. and watch that later and see what, what his striding was there. Just a little. Oh, look. yeah, that's that's a, yeah, yeah. That looked like just a little open, a little open, and then she leans into that right side a little bit, and it was too bad. Uh, shame, good round, but unfortunately drops the I one rail. Out it's actually a second last fence in two weeks. He had the last jump down last week as well. That's really a bummer. <laughs> oh. Oh, what a shame. Yeah. Uh, Shane Sweetnam and uh, Samantha Buer is the uh, clear so far. Alison Robitaille sitting in third place, as I did say a little bit earlier on. The fast four is going to make a difference. Sam Walker in fourth. Uh, Susan Horn in fifth on 46.52. And uh, that's our lineup so far. Niall, thank you very much for joining us. You're going to head back down again. Thanks so much, but, Stephen. Um, Thanks for having me. En enjoy your next few weeks, whatever's in store. Thank I know you're taking you. a little break as well at the moment, but uh, looking forward to seeing you back Appreciate in Appreciate it and safe travels to you Thank as well, you very Stephen. much. Thanks, Niall. Uh, super stuff. So those are the clears so far to them with Sam Buers and uh, with Shane Sweetnam at the moment as part of this uh, Longines 
uh, Grand Prix here into the uh, afternoon here in Tibet. Just a moment's hiatus until we go on to our next. And still leaves us with Cara Chad, Amy Miller, Federico Fernandez, Kent Farrington, uh, Andrew Bournes, Charlotte Jacobs, uh, Jordan Coyle. Erin Ballard, Tali de Jong and uh, Sean Cassidy uh, on the list so far. So uh, those just missing out. Daniel Coyle there going into sixth place uh, from that point of view. Cara Chad uh, walking on in. The uh, Canadian rider. Been part of the Canadian squads before now. Uh, Igor GPH. Again, another one that hasn't... Uh, in terms of horse being into too many of these big Grand Prix yet. And Cara, who was third in the Grand Prix qualifier here last week, World Championship rider back in 2018, has been also been competing over in Europe, over in Spain. see from oh, sales over too was highly competitive last week really impressive uh, partnership and just airborne over the 163rd fence now again it's going to be keeping all of that energy and, and power controlled looking good so far certainly not going to have a problem with time Igor looking impressive over these fences and actually looks more impressive having uh, gone up a level this week into these big classes. Again, will not be a pairing that have done too many of these. Well, it's the first five star for them coming in. They were jumping four stars over in Spain fish top three in a good class there and this is looking very good indeed it's clear at 73 47 very impressive from Cara Chad and uh, Igor looking better and better by the minute and uh, third of the clears and uh, two now in there for Canada with uh, Sam Buers and uh, Cara Chad Shane Sweetnam is sandwiched between them the Irishman with uh, out of the blue SCF Another strong one for the Canadian squad is Amy Miller. Future Adventures Cristiano, the 13-year-old by Canoso for the 2016 Canadian Olympian. And for Amy, riding some top-class rounds last week as well as part of the five-star here before leading into this Nations Cup week. Finished 11th in uh, last week's Grand Prix, but that was on... Uh, Truman from that point of view won a very good class in fact to the top of the team class last week uh, in the major league format as the winning combination Cristiano also part of their lineup during Nations Cup week down in Wellington Florida Oof, just pulls it off behind it's nicely down on the five strides but just on the descent down comes the keg plank again four faults very much in the reckoning for good prize money here this afternoon so they're going to keep that in the mind of uh, not steadying off the pace at all could move up to the double and it is a big double coming in there at the beehives. Wonderful colours of the pastel colours there too. Just going to sit on the four faults. 
Final fence drops as well, I'm afraid. And so it is the two big verticals down at that end of the ring. Uh, it is eight faults and 76-19 for uh, Amy Miller this time for the Canadian. Going into 15th place as it stands. Four falters take us all the way down to 10th uh, place at the moment. In fact, 11th place with uh, Kyle King on 78-20. He was the steadiest of them. And uh, Alison Robitaille, the fastest of them at 75-54, will be in fourth place at the moment. Federico Fernandez, talking of experience. Uh, Federico with Davidoff, the 14 year old gelding by Olympic Fire. Federico, uh, Olympic rider for Mexico. And a uh, top class rider indeed onto their teams again uh, this year. Jumped in Mexico for clear and four uh, for the three time Olympian competing over in Germany just last week in Wiesbaden. And back for this Mexican stage. And of course, uh, Mexico, Canada, and USA. Coming in pretty strong with uh, those the three teams looking for those qualifying places for the final in Barcelona. And just goes to cut up at that first fence and just makes it a little bit too narrow, unfortunately, and has that down. It's about the third or even fourth riders to have uh, the first down. Just trying to set themselves up on the angle. Fence two, although there's plenty of room there. Hopefully not a similar frustration to Mario Delorie of just having the first fence down. Looking good through the triple, and this is going to be frustration for uh, Federico with just the first flints on the floor. And 78-36 uh, is going to leave him in the same situation as uh, Mario Delorier and into 12th place there on the four for uh, Federico. And uh, with that, uh, with Davidoff. So it is uh, down into 12th, just on the one rail. And frustratingly there, three of them still on the clear with Cara Chad, Shane Sweetnam and uh, Sam Brewers at this point. And uh, delighted to say... Alongside me is Alison Robitaille. Alison, good afternoon. Hello. Um, from your point of view, um, sharp four faults in terms of time. It's put you in fourth place at the moment. I'm sure it's it's frustrating and also pleased with it as well. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> yes. My horse is pretty naturally fast. Yeah. Um, so that's it goes to my advantage. Uh, tell us a little bit about Oakingham, Lara. Um, I really. These are the, her first two weeks at jumping at the five star level. Um, so I'm just thrilled with her, how she's progressed and coming along. Look really impressive from that point of view. I mean, you've you've been there into you know won right many big Grand Prix right around the world, the done, done it all. How are you feeling about it these days? You're, you're coming back into that level. Uh, it's really exciting. I yeah. love the group of horses I have. I love working with Kent. Um, so it's a little bit of a different approach with balancing it between time with my kids. Yeah. Uh, but it's been really fun. Yeah, brilliant. Well, let, let's talk around what we've got coming up here. And uh, in fact. We've got your trainer, Kent Farrington. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is where you get to turn the tables uh, ah. from that point of view. <laughs> uh, Kent Farrington and uh, Greya, nine-year-old again, that's looked um, very impressive from what we've seen of this horse in uh, this season where they've really stepped up into their first season, obviously being a nine-year-old, into these uh, four, five-star classes and above. Started off in uh, a group of national classes in the early part of the year, but again, been brought on very well produced by Kent. Kent actually won the Grand Prix here at the Nations Cup last year with Orofina. But this Greys look very impressive. Yeah, I know he thinks really highly of her. Um, she's obviously very talented and um, fingers crossed she moves up well. And from his point of view, and actually it's interesting as seeing over this big track, he has to do a bit of, bit of work to rank her on down that line there, but seeing her over even bigger fences, she looks more impressive. Absolutely. Um, she's so athletic and talented um so so far so good in terms of how these lines have written here ali what how did you take on this 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 line come let's take this one coming up here to the to this big double um 
this worked out really nicely for me. It's you got to look early. The the turquoise oxer comes up a little quicker than you think, um, but then the six actually sets you up quite nicely for the double. Um, the black fillers seems to hold the horses a little bit more, so it gives you the ability to ride the oxer a little bit. Okay, just again anchoring back down. Gets them in the right spot. So athletic as a pair, and this is looking very impressive indeed. Oh, and just didn't happen down the last. Uh, 76 T3, they just got a little bit disconnected coming down there, Ali. What did you think? Yeah, it looks like it looks like he held up for seven and she propped for a step and he ended up on eight, I think. If I didn't miscount. Well, a little look here again, and unfortunately, yeah, it takes them to the roots of the the vertical at the last. So unfortunately on the 4, 70, 63, but actually a takeaway from that round, you'd be pleased with the rest of it. Uh, absolutely. I thought she handled the, the height and the width and everything really well. And um, that's part of moving a horse up to jumping these bigger jumps. Sometimes you don't always know how they're going to react. Well, uh, it still leaves you in a good position at the moment in, in fourth position. You're on some good prize money at the moment. I, I am. I am. <laughs> but I don't want to jinx anyone. No, don't <laughs> jinx anyone. No, we, we, but that's what's good with this sport. You want to compete against everyone. But once you come out of the ring, majority, you know, you're all friends. Of course, yes. Yeah, that's that's the that's the camaraderie. That's what's great with it. Uh, Andrew Bournes and uh, C Top Blue for the QBS Equestrian and himself onto the teams here last year as well. Grand Prix winners previously, uh, season or so ago now at uh, Wellington, the NetJets Grand Prix. They jumped last year at Hickstead out on the field uh, as well. And, and has looked a seriously impressive combination, haven't they? They've won a lot of good classes, and Andrew's always so competitive and in there. Little plank. That, yeah. oh. Same fence that, that cost Amy Miller from that point of view. What's your take on that line? I heard from Niall earlier, but what's um, your take? I think the the Liverpool Oxer holds the horses enough, so just like I was saying about the Black Oxer, it gives you the ability to ride across the Liverpool, and I think it's carried some horses a little too far into that steady five to the delicate plank and there it is on the floor yeah uh down the line now for uh, andrew again four faults uh, potentially puts you in the money and looking very good otherwise and this wide oxer at 11. gets in a, a good rhythm coming down to this triple combination Good. Overall good. 74-19. Just finished on the four there for Andrew Bournes. C top blue. Uh, Going to be frustrated with that, but it's it's a fence that was there to be caught like it's that. A, I was going to say, it's really the one of the bogey fences on the course, um, but in general, it was a great round. Uh, overall, your thoughts on, on that, Perry? Oh, the, he's like I said, he's always so competitive, actually, not just on that horse, so you always have to watch out for him when he's <laughs> in the jump off. Uh, and I hate to say he's just a little bit quicker than you were. I saw that, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so he goes into fourth place. Sorry. <laughs> Alison Robitaille into uh, fifth. There you go, Alison into fifth. Uh, sixth place to Sam Walker at the moment. Uh, Charlotte Jacobs and Charlotte with uh, Rinkula Milchon, this 10-year-old uh, uh, by Adelta said for the North Star team of uh, New York. And Charlotte's been moving up superbly, hasn't she? She really, uh, yeah, she's riding great. Um, she has two really good horses and exciting for her to be on the team this week yeah looking forward to seeing that first five-star team for uh, charlotte from that point of view uh, she went very well down in in florida this year she won the aiken grand prix uh, last year as well and and this is this is a lovely little horse as well to go into uh, this is a great combination um, this is a horse that I would like to ride. It, I, I was about like to say similar, to you. <laughs> similar types, for sure. I was about to say to you, this, this strikes me as a, an Alison Robitaille yes. type. Yes. <laughs> really impressive. Looked really good last week as well. Yeah, she had some super rounds last week on the Major League team. Good kickoff into uh, Lexington as well just a few weeks ago takes a little wider turn there that sets her up well for the little bit of a long five. I think that five yeah. gets a little longer when you're going away from the in gate there. That was a great approach to this line. Very good so far. She came out with some good rounds in Florida when they got to step up. So last week looked so impressive and, and not surprised to see them in contention here, but this is 
one of the tough ones for them. Now, make the back. No. Oh. Ah, looks like they just cooked kicked out there at the back unfortunately yeah, exactly just caught it but yeah, that was too bad i mean that was a super round i don't know if she, how many five-star grand prix she jumped with this horse but not no exactly this coming into their first one in fact from yeah. that point of view um so for you as you say lovely horse but it's just got you know small but huge jumping ability absolutely yeah so athletic she could try and take that one home <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a pretty good combination also <laughs> <laughs> they, no. d they don't go on their own. They don't no. go on their own. No, it's very nicely done. And I say first five-star Grand Prix for them. Just finished on the four, 75.99. And we'll go into seventh place there for Charlotte Jacobs at this point. Three clears. Sambiers, uh, Shane Sweetnam, and Cara Chad. New ride for uh, Jordan Coyle now. Four gold is the 12-year-old uh, from the uh, Falkirk Farm. Uh, taking us into our final few. The Irishman, uh, five-star winner in the Grand Prix here last year with Ariso. And again, hasn't been out in the in these type of classes to to test this horse out. But again, a smaller one with with jumping ability. Yeah, I'm not familiar at all with this um, combination. This is the first show yep. I've seen them together at. Horse. But Jordan, really, whatever he's riding, he's competitive on. Time-wise, what were you, you've you've got space out there, haven't you? Yeah, the time is not. Um, I didn't feel like it was a factor, especially for my quick moving horse going into my course plan. Um, but there's, there's lots of places to make up and save time if you're worried about it. Horse has won three star Grand Prix before now with a previous rider and Jordan. Looking Davis. very good. Yeah. Able to step things up here now. Just got to keep a good run down here. Came in slow to the triple, which is really what you want. So then you can push a little out at ah. sea. Oh. And again, on the way out, just catches them out. Doesn't make the width across that final oxa. So finishing on 477 seconds for Jordan Coyle and for Gold. But you can see it going into that triple, can't you? If they're just hanging back at all. Exactly. Yep. It catches them. So Jordan Coyle and uh, for gold going into 11th place. You, you've just got to have a lot of engine to finish off there. Exactly. You've got to come in, in at A slow enough to make the two strides ride, uh, not have the two strides stop you so you can keep your momentum over B so then that carries you over C. Super. Well, uh, we come into our final three, Erin Ballard and uh, Narcotic Van Het Dingenshoff is the 10-year-old uh, owned by Elan Ferda for the World Championship rider. Gakia, her World Championship ride here this week. I think they'll be on to uh, Nations Cup. But Narcotic has looked very impressive as well this season. And uh, for her, I mean, what makes her so good? Because there's, there's a list of attributes, aren't there? Uh, well, Erin is one of my closest friends. Yeah. Um, I think she's um, also just one of the best riders. Um, she's so consistent and so strong in her position. Um, she's, yeah, I really admire her as a rider. Narcotique coming into these five-star ranks as well. And that's a hard first fence. Yeah. It's so vertical, and the first line, if you plan on the eight, it, it can be risky, and it, that's happened to a few people I've seen. Well, say so we see Mario Delorier, we saw Federico Fernandez. Uh, how, how did you interpret riding that first line, and what was um, the discussion? Kent told me not to override the vertical in worrying about doing the eight strides. Yeah. He said, if you don't get a great vertical, then just go more direct to, yes. to do the eight. Don't make such a big deal about having to wing the vertical. So that was my approach. That was your approach. Yes. Erin uh, just taking uh, a wider run. Yeah. Th this horse um, was, I think, also kind of moving up to this level. So... I think she decided yeah. to call it a day. Uh, so I think this is coming into one of their potentially first five-star Grand Prix, just down first five-star Grand Prix for this ride, uh, has gone very well through three and four-star levels so far. Has been jumping a number of the five-star classes, the, the, the second classes through the season. And so not quite working today. So retiring there, Erin Ballard and Nakoti, but will come uh, eventually uh, from that point of view. So uh, two left to go. In fact, just one left to come by the looks of it. Looks like Tyler de Jong is a withdrawal. So Sean Cassidy and the October Hill Sales NKH Cento Blue, the 13-year-old 
for uh, Erin Davis. And uh, this again has been a new combination together. Has looked very good yesterday as well for uh, Sean. Sean based uh, over here on the west coast as well. And this is a, a new ride for him. It's been one that's been proven at five star two. And, and they've gelled very swiftly together. And, and like all of us, we haven't really seen this pair together much at all. Exactly. Going to be really interesting to see. It's, it's a horse with the definite scope and ability. Yeah. Took a little time to get straight to that. That can be a spooky fence for some horses, that third vertical. That was a good approach. Looks good down that line so yeah. far. Yeah. It's interesting, the third fence we thought looked so imposing actually hasn't caused as many problems as we thought. Of course, it's linked through that line. but Yeah, and you have a nice approach to it yeah. after that first line. Sean just putting a bit of energy on down to the Oxa. Now this is where quite a few have got to the stage and gone, this is this is great. Now what, what do we do from here? So now he's got a great oxer and now he's got to just hold up and be a little patient into the triple. He won, looks like he did the eight. Looking good. going for the six. Gets and it. And he did it. Gets the six and uh, so We'll add to our list of clears. Will be the fourth clear of the lineup for uh, Sean Cassidy. Let's say new combination together, and it's looking very impressive indeed. Sean Cassidy yep. and NKH Cento Blue completes our first round. It leaves us with the jump off still to come of Samantha Buers, of Shane Sweet, of Cara Chad, and Sean Cassidy. Uh, Andrew Bournes uh, finishing in fifth, and Alison, you're into sixth place, which means you're okay. going to be needed for the presentation, so I'm going to let you go <laughs> okay. as well. Um, okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Joyce. A really impressive horse with Oaking Blarit. Looking forward thank to seeing you. much more of that. Thank uh, you. Very uh, excited. Good season. Yeah, I appreciate it. Good. Looking forward to it. Alison, yeah. thank you. Uh, we are getting set for the jump off of this uh, Longin FEI Nations Cup Grand Prix. Four of them have uh, overcome the course. And Samantha Beers was the first of them of uh, Canada, one of two for Canada into the jump off. We see Shane Sweetnam with uh, Out of the Blue SCF. We see Cara Chad and uh, the um, very impressive Igor GPH coming into it as well. And finally, Sean Casty and NKH Cento Blue. Good luck to them. Uh, we're going to be a few moments away as our course designing team set it up, as you can see. A little bit of breeze here. The flag's flying, uh, emphasizing the international nature of uh, what we have this week. And uh, we'll also be building up to that launch in FEI Nations Cup here on Sunday as well. So jump off on the way for the Longines Grand Prix. $235,000 five-star Nations Cup Grand Prix here at Thunderbird. For 100 years, Og and Brown has helped our clients achieve their financial goals. Coincidentally, this year also marks Thunderbird's 50th anniversary, and we would like to congratulate them on this monumental achievement. Over the last century, we have forged ahead through the Great Depression, World War II, the Great Financial Crisis, a global pandemic, and more. Along the way, we've adapted, evolved, and established our firm as a stable and trustworthy partner. Our 100th anniversary is a wonderful opportunity to celebrate the clients, team members, and communities that have made us who we are. We're thrilled to share this important milestone year with the team at Thunderbird. 100 years on, Autumn Brown's story is still being written. We look forward to future chapters of making a difference in our communities and helping our clients achieve their financial goals for generations. Paladin Risk Solutions, local experts, global experience. Risk mitigation solutions for the modern world. Expert consultancy Paladin Risk Solutions is the industry leader in assisting their clients with identifying and mitigating their risk. With Blue Sky Risk Intelligence Monitoring, live notifications and alerts, customized reporting, and geofence real-time data. Paladin Risk Solutions, local experts, global experience. And proud partner and sponsor of Thunderbird Show Park for their 50th season. My name is Gen Sugimoto, CEO of Show Plus. At Show Plus, our team is passionate about equine health, wellness, and safety. I think Show Plus, we can all see the growth that has come with it, and it's just an amazing product to have. I think all horses and riders are very privileged to have it now in 
mostly shows. It has great benefit for us. I think it makes us riders feel much more comfortable going to the ring and knowing that if something happens, we have an extra benefit there. Once again this afternoon, a big thank you to Longines as the title partner and official timekeeper as well as the official watch of the series. Longines is proud to be associated with the Longines FEI Jumping Nations Cup of Canada right here in Langley, B.C. Longines' passion for the equestrian world dates back to 1869. Today the brand is involved in the most important equestrian events all over the world. The official watch here in Langley is a model from the Longines Dolce Vita X Y. The Y-Line Swiss designer Yvonne Narekmuth has given the famously rectangular timepieces a new identity. With sophisticated leather straps referencing the equestrian world so dear to Longines and their design is evocative of bridles and harness.
right, ladies and gentlemen, it is time to get back to business with our jump ball for the $235,000 CSI Five Star Long Jean Grand Prix. We have four to return in today's jump ball, of course. The first of which will be Samantha Beers and Chick D. Z. first into the ring to set our time to beat. Here we go then into the jump off of this uh, Longines Grand Prix here at uh, Thunderbird, the uh, Vancouver stage of the Longines FEI Nations Cup. Just four making into the jump off and uh, we start with Canada. We've got two for Canada, one for Ireland and uh, one for the USA. Samantha Buers after a very good run uh, down in Thermal earlier on this season heads in with Sheik de MZ. The 10-year-old uh, starts us off the shortened course goes like this. We'll follow it round. It's the... Uh, Morning Star Fence, the uh, tomato market stall at uh, 11. Then across to uh, what was the second part of the double. And uh, at 10, then to 4, back to Fence 1. Doing this really effectively so far. Good spin away from uh, Sam up to this vertical that caused so much trouble as the first fence in uh, round 1. Up to the Oxa at 2, and unfortunately she doesn't get to it. Just hankers on the brakes and says no thank you coming into uh, fence two. Again to a gasp from the crowd. All okay but they'll come back to this one again. And uh, from two they would head down to 12 B and C. Just looking to push the buttons there. Jumps it this time okay. And so uh, then to B and C of what was the triple combination. They'll turn back here. Obviously out of contention with uh, the stop on course. And it's uh, taking up some time faults. And a new fence at fence 15, the Longine vertical at the last for them to round up. Uh, what were two good rounds, didn't touch a fence, but unfortunately has a stop uh, at fence two. And uh, we'll leave her with time at 66.28, so 17 for uh, Samantha Buers and Sheik de Emma's edge to the shame because it was such a terrific first round. And as I say, didn't touch a rail over rounds one and two. Uh, Shane Sweetnam. And the Spy Coast Farms uh, combination here. This is out of the blue SCF. The nine-year-old by Verdi. Verdi, the top ride, as was, of Michael van der Vleuten that went on from European Championships, World Championships, Olympic medals as well, and many Grand Prix. And has certainly stamped the next generation. Uh, bred through the uh, Spy Coast Farm. Belgian bred right the Came out of a Cassini mare. Now uh, for out of the blue that looked very impressive into round one as well into their first big five-star Grand Prix shot here. Shane getting a good angle at those first two. Really slices up to the uh, beehives, the pastel colours at ten. Multicolours of fence four. Doesn't bat an eyelid at this. Horse has been growing in maturity throughout the winter months. Shane making sure at fence two. Now here chances it enough. Maybe leaves a little space to get a fraction tighter for anyone coming behind them. And then leans forward, gets a good pace down to the last. Takes a little bit of an angle off that as well. Gets tight up to it. And very nicely done at 43.05. Very efficient round from Shane Sweden and out of the blue SCF on this maturing nine-year-old. And uh, looking good there for Shane to lead the way on a grey once again. Two more left to come, but double clear for them. Clearing both the rounds for Shane to head the field in this uh, Longines $235,000 Grand Prix at this point. Still Canada with Karachad and uh, USA with Sean Cassidy to come. Kara walks on out from under the, the tower. The opening the gates at the Fort Arena here. here is and Superb Jimmy. run that she had uh, in Spain in the early part of this year. And this horse looking more and more impressive over the big fences. Again into uh, their first five-star Grand Prix together. Ten-year-old Igor GPH. Chance to really open the pipes now and chase down Shane Sweeten and 43 or 5 to say he's very efficient. Maybe some space in there for 
someone to just take a little bit more off that yet. Also came through the Netherlands and through was written by Joey Lansick. Even Cara through last season as well. Oh, and takes a look and not so keen to take a run. Again, some of these combinations just being tested out in the, the real heat of battle for the first time. And sometimes it works and sometimes it just needs to come with a few more months of experience. Not keen on the water this time around, I'm afraid. And that's a shame because they had a terrific first round. And so Kara Chad, I'm afraid the bell goes for elimination, which is a shame. Just unfortunately comes out in round two, but looking forward to seeing that horse more this year as well. Looks very impressive. Um, Shane Sweetnam leading on the clear at 43.05 and leaves us just one. Well, we had a tough Grand Prix here last week and uh, another one where it might be just a double clear that is the top finisher. Going to be that consistency that pays off, we'll see. One come. One left to come, and that's uh, Sean Cassidy and the October Hill Sales of Texas's uh, MKH Cento Blue. Good record so far, but have never jumped as a pairing into anything as big as this yet. Sean, the West Coaster, has been a very good catch rider as well for a host of horses to produce. Moves a well away now for doesn't look takes it well. Little move across to the left. Just wants a little care at two before getting into this double. Similar part of that of Shane Sweetnam. Little touch. Now the crowd says go. Time to be to 43.05. Has a very good chance as they come to the last. And is in enough. 42.46 for Sean Casty. And uh, he will be your winner of this uh, Longines Grand Prix. Super combination. He was last out in round one. Prime position into the jump off as well. And it just pips at the post. Shane Sweetnam and out of the blue SCF. It's a new combination together for Sean Casty, But it's looked good all week and uh, now impressively franking their form with a Grand Prix win here at Thunderbird as well. Superbly done, a good battle between uh, USA and Ireland. Will that be emulated into the team competition later this week as well? We will see. But here, set sail for the final fence and just squeaks enough to get ahead of the world number 10. So Sean Casty will be your, your winner. Shane Sweetnam of Ireland in second. Uh, Samantha Beers finished on 17 in third. Cara Chad in fourth. Shane, because those both jumped very good rounds in round one. They will still finish in third and fourth. Uh, Andrew Bourne's in fifth with C-Top Blue, fastest of the fours. Alison Robitaille will take sixth place, also on the four at 75.54. Sam Walker after that for Canada. And top eight completed by another good performance, just one down for Charlotte Jacobs, this time with ring cooler Mill Sean. But uh, getting ready to sash up and uh, also put on the ribbons for Sean Cassidy. It is a win with NKH Centre Blue for the October Hill Farms here into Thunderbird Show Park. Podiums being put in position. Champagne is set to fly. And I uh, know that's the excitement. Biggest win of his career uh, so far as well. He will be absolutely ecstatic with that. Not only a new combination, a new level for uh, Ryder as well coming into this on a more regular basis and uh, he's had a little bit of experience of that in the last couple of years but now has really shown what he can do with the uh, very good ride coming in there of Cento Blue. So they will be the ones receiving the blue. Congratulations to them. The winner of the Longines Nations Cup Grand Prix here in Canada is USA with Sean Cassidy.
Paladin Risk Solutions, local experts, global experience. Risk mitigation solutions for the modern world. Expert consultancy Paladin Risk Solutions is the industry leader in assisting their clients with identifying and mitigating their risk. With Blue Sky Risk Intelligence Monitoring, live notifications and alerts, customized reporting, and geofence real-time data. Paladin Risk Solutions, local experts, global experience. And proud partner and sponsor of Thunderbird Show Park for their 50th season. My name is Gen Sugimoto, CEO of Show Plus. At Show Plus, our team is passionate about equine health, wellness, and safety. I think Show Plus, we can all see the growth that has come with it, and it's just an amazing product to have. I think all horses and riders are very privileged to have it now. It mostly shows. It has great benefits for us. I think it makes us riders feel much more comfortable going to the ring and knowing that if something happens, we have an extra benefit there. As the title partner and official timekeeper and official watch of the series, Longines he is proud to be associated with the Longines FEI Jumping Nations Cup of Canada right here in Langley. Longines passion for equestrian world dates back to 1869. Today, the brand is involved in the most important equestrian events all over the world. The official watch here in Langley is a model from the Longines Dolce Vita XYVY line. Swiss designer Yvonne Richman has given the famously rectangular timepieces a new identity with sophisticated leather straps referencing the equestrian world so dear to Longines. Their design is evocative of bridles and harness.
ladies and gentlemen, prior to tonight's award presentations, at this time, we do ask that you please rise if you are able and please remove all caps as we honor our champion here today with the playing of the American National Anthem. <laughs> And now, ladies and gentlemen, we invite forward Ms. Romina De Pasquale, the Longines Brand Manager of Canada, to come forward and congratulate our champion, Sean Cassidy and Cento Blue. And now on behalf of the organizing committee, we welcome forward Ms. Jane Tidball, CEO of Thunderbird Show Park, accompanied by Mr. Chris Pack, president of Thunderbird Show Park. And on behalf of the FBI, we welcome Ms. Norma Rodriguez, the FBI foreign judge. Congratulations once again to our champions, Sean Cassidy and Cento Blue, in this the $235,000 CSI Five Star Longines Grand Prix. We will now continue with our presentations, going now to second, Shane Sweetnam, and out of the blue, SCF. Top place in Canadian here today, Samantha Beers and Chick DMZ in third. In fourth, Kara Chad and Igor GPH. In fifth today, Andrew Bournes and C. Top Blue. <laughs> 
And completing our top six, Allison Robitaille and Oakingham Lira. And now, with the ribbons pinned and the champion crowned, we do have one favor to ask of our champion, Shane Cassidy and Cento Blue, to lead the way around the ring in today's lap of honor. I just got paid. Your champions of the $235,000 Longines Grand Prix, Sean Cassidy and Cento Blue. As they take their solo victory lap around, we think congratulations as well to our top six competitors today. In a job well done through this $235,000 CSI five star competition. Congratulations to everyone once again as we conclude the $235,000 CSI Five Star Longines Grand Prix and indeed our Friday festivities here in the Grand Prix Arena at Thunderbird Show Park celebrating our 50th anniversary. But don't worry, as the weekend continues along, we've got more exciting equestrian action coming up, starting with the six and seven year old Crooks Show Jumping Young Horse Showcase tomorrow morning. That'll be followed by the Just World International Grand Prix Meter 45. And then it's on to the CSI Five Star Paladin Cup on tap for Saturday here in the Fort Grand Prix Arena. We'll see you then.